There's a lot of conflicting information out there about tipping your wedding vendors, and I want you to forget all of it. In today's episode, we're going to walk through exactly how to decide who should get a tip, how much, and even some extra special additional ways of saying thank you. That's all coming up next on the Wedding Planning Podcast. Hey there, it's Kara, and the goal of our time here together on the Wedding Planning Podcast is pretty simple. I want you to have all the resources and the confidence to plan the wedding you want minus the crushing stress, expense, and overwhelm that's felt by so many engaged couples. I've been sharing my signature wedding planning advice on the podcast for eight years now, and for the first time ever, I've opened up my door to one-on-one wedding strategy calls. Whether you're looking for just one session to get your wedding plan started, or a series of ongoing support calls throughout your engagement, I'm here for you. Get the details and book your first call today when you visit wedpodcast.com. Enjoy the show. Welcome to today's episode of the Wedding Planning Podcast, and thank you so much as always for joining me today. This show is Wedding Planning Podcast Classic. It's one of the most popular topics of all time, and we are going to take a very close look at some common misunderstandings that are flying around out there surrounding tipping your wedding vendors. Do you think you have to automatically package up envelopes with 20% tips for every single wedding vendor you hire? Think again. Today, I'm going to save you hours of time on Google and likely hundreds, if not thousands of dollars over that couple who just takes the advice out there on tipping at face value and doesn't bother taking the time to explore the nuances and the undercurrents that are actually at play as you thoughtfully decide who deserves an extra monetary thank you on your wedding day. So come along with me and let's uncover the truth about tipping your wedding vendors. Can you imagine packaging up dozens of envelopes with hundreds of dollars in each of them and doling out 10 to 20% to each and every single vendor who shows up to do their job on the day of your wedding? Yikes, that is a lot of money. The truth, and I'm going to let you in on a little secret here, you do not have to do that. Whew, right? You definitely do not have to tip every single vendor who shows up on your wedding day. Let's have an in-depth conversation today about tipping your wedding vendors. So who on earth gets a tip? How much should it be? And how do you know if it's already been included in your wedding bill? There is a lot of confusion about tipping, and I'm right there with you. This is also a topic that is pretty charged, and people are very passionate and have very strong opinions about tips. So for example, if you're a bartender, a hairdresser, or another service industry professional, you may rely very heavily on tips from your customers. And on the flip side, someone who has not held those positions may feel like leaving a tip for mediocre service or for somebody who is simply, quote, doing their job, and I'm using air quotes around doing their job, to that person, leaving a tip might seem ridiculous. So there's definitely a lot to unpack here, and I want to start with a couple of examples to frame this issue of tipping. So my first example is if you go into a self-service frozen yogurt shop, I think most of us have been into these type of places where you pump your own yogurt, whatever flavor you want, you put as many toppings on as you want, and then at the end you approach a cashier who weighs it for you, you pay them, and you sit and eat. Okay, so When I go into these places and I see a tip jar on the counter at the end when I'm paying, part of me says, wait a minute here. (laughs) I'm doing all the work. I'm doing everything. Why would I leave a tip for someone who's simply standing behind the counter playing on their cell phone and then when I approach them, they simply ring up my order? 
I don't tip the cashier at Target. I don't tip the cashier at the grocery store. Isn't this kind of the same thing? I think it is very much the same thing. And I personally likely would not leave a tip in that situation. Now, let's reframe things a little bit. Say you go into a frozen yogurt shop where you do order from a person at the counter and they make it for you. And maybe they are very, very friendly. They throw on double the M&Ms. They don't charge you any extra for them. And they give you a bathroom key to use, even though there's a huge sign that says no public restrooms. Does that person deserve a tip? I think they do. So in this case, a tip is for the extra effort that they have gone out of their way to be very friendly to you. They have given you extra M&Ms and they have let you use the restroom. They have been extra kind to you. Okay, bear with me because I have one more example to look at as we kind of frame this overall question about leaving tips. So the third example is let's go into a sit down restaurant where a service industry professional, a waiter or a waitress is doing much more than just ringing you up. They're actually seating you, explaining a menu, serving you drinks. They're making multiple trips back and forth to your table to bring you everything you need to feel at home, relaxed, and to enjoy your dining experience. In the United States, and this is not the case in other parts of the world as a side note, but here in the U.S., we more or less automatically tip a waiter or a waitress in that situation at a sit-down restaurant anywhere from 15 to 20%. So in other words, if you eat at a sit-down restaurant in the United States, the service would have to be downright terrible to not leave a tip. It would probably feel super awkward and really, really weird to get up and not leave a tip on the table for your waiter or your waitress. And I think this is where we get hung up on feeling pressure to leave a tip for our wedding vendors, regardless of the service that they perform. Now, let's talk about that tip that you automatically leave at the restaurant. I read a really extensive article in the New Yorker magazine on tipping and the restaurant service industry as a whole. And in a nutshell, we tip waiters and waitresses in the U.S. because the service industry in our country does not pay them a high hourly wage. I mentioned briefly before, in other parts of the world, this is different. So in other countries, leaving a tip can actually be seen as very belittling or insulting. And that's another topic for another day and for another podcast. But here in the U.S., we essentially as consumers are subsidizing a waitress's paychecks with our tips Noting the fact that in most states, waiters and waitresses don't even make hourly minimum wage, so we are supplementing their paycheck versus the restaurant owner simply paying them a decent hourly wage. That would be the alternative, and that's how it's done in these other countries where it is not customary to leave a tip. This all goes way deep into legislation, to politics, and to our culture, much, much deeper than I'm going to dive today. But in essence, keep this in mind for our conversation today, that here in the United States, the restaurant customer is subsidizing the service provider's wage with our tips. Okay, are you with me still? Because that was a lot of information and background on tipping, but I think it's really, really important to frame this conversation about the list of wedding vendors who you are going to be working with on your wedding day and who should get a tip. Now, maybe you have already gone out and researched looking around for advice on this, and I will tell you that pretty much everything I have ever seen about tipping wedding vendors contradicts everything else. So it is no wonder why we're very, very confused about this topic. Let's review some of my guidelines for figuring out who to tip on your wedding day. Okay, my first basic guideline is that tips are not obligatory. Let that sink in and I'll repeat it. Tips are not mandatory. 
the myth that you have to leave a tip for every single wedding vendor, every person who shows up on your day is simply not true. We feel this certain amount of pressure and obligation to leave a tip as though it is an obligation simply for somebody showing up and doing their job. This is the thought that goes into leaving a tip at a restaurant. The bill shows up and you automatically write in 20% over the total without really thinking twice about it. But we are not eating at a restaurant. We are hosting a wedding. And can you imagine automatically tipping 20% for every single wedding vendor who shows up that day? You would have to have thousands of dollars written into your wedding budget just to cover the tips alone. And here is the really important distinction. Here is why your wedding vendors are very different from the waitress at your favorite restaurant. You are likely paying your wedding vendors a very generous hourly wage. Most of these vendors are not working for tips in the same way that your waitress at the Cheesecake Factory is. Now, a wedding vendor who goes above and beyond what was promised in a contract may deserve a tip for their service. And your personal discretion totally plays into this. And we're going to come. I'll be back with so much more after these special offers from today's show sponsors. Susan's Travel Services is so excited to partner with you to plan your honeymoon, destination wedding, or maybe even your bachelor or bachelorette party. Susan and her team have been planning dream vacations for 27 years, and they are truly the best in the business for start to finish planning services. Travel and new experiences are incredibly special to me, and Susan and her team have helped me plan some unforgettable vacations, including a bachelorette party in Cabo and a family anniversary celebration in Cancun. They meticulously researched the best all-inclusive options for us based on some very specific priorities and the professional assistance in choosing location, resort, activities, and transportation was absolutely priceless. Susan has been in the travel business for 27 years and she personally travels to her recommended destinations all the time. So she has firsthand on the ground experience with all the amazing resorts, excursions, and services that she recommends. From all inclusive resorts in Mexico and the Caribbean, overwater bungalows in the Maldives, or that African safari that you've always dreamed of, save yourself hours of research and guesswork and let Susan and her team find you the best options for a once in a lifetime vacation. Reach out to Susan and her team today by emailing info at susanstravelservices.com and be sure to let her know that I sent you and get $50 off your final booking or $200 off your destination wedding. Her email one more time is info at susanstravelservices.com. Minted Weddings offers you incredible prices on freshly sourced stationery designs from independent artists for everything from your save the date announcements to invitations, matching wedding websites, programs, seating charts, and beyond. Enjoy a complimentary 30-minute stationery design consultation to help you find the perfect style for your unique wedding celebration. You can also try out their free monogram maker, which is so fun and so easy. You simply plug in your first names, your wedding date, and choose from dozens of fun designs and custom colors. I recommend Minted to all of my friends and family because not only are their gorgeous designs incredibly affordable, most importantly, they offer a flawless and luxurious end product. I use Minted every year for our family's holiday cards, and I also love their wide selection of unique stationery and personalized gifts. Wedding Planning Podcast listeners can view current promotions and special offers by visiting weddingplanningpodcast.co slash minted. That website one more time is weddingplanningpodcast.co slash minted. The second thing to consider when wondering if you should leave a tip or not is somewhat easy. 
Okay, who finally something that's straightforward. So this is to look and see if the vendor contract already includes a service charge or gratuity. So this is going to be a separate line item on your catering bill or your venue bill if you're going with an all inclusive place. So look for this separate line item on your final bill. And if you see a service charge or a gratuity that is already in there, it's already been calculated into the total, then you definitely don't need to worry about packing in another 15 to 20 percent in an envelope for that wedding vendor. Especially keep an eye out for this on transportation company contracts. So your limo, also catering. So catering and transportation are two vendors that will commonly include gratuity as a separate line item service fee on your bill. If there is not a service fee in the contract, the recommended amount to tip a catering company is 15 to 20%. So this is one of the very few areas about tipping your wedding vendors that is relatively consistent across the board. So a 15 to 20% tip for the catering company is pretty much standard practice and I will let you do with that what you will. A common question that comes up here is what about the bartenders, the person checking coats or any restroom attendants? Um, do these people need to have a separate tip doled out from you personally. Here, again, this is up to your personal discretion, but do keep in mind that guests will oftentimes tip the bartenders as they're ordering their drinks, and that is definitely something to consider. Same with restroom attendants. Oftentimes, you'll see that a restroom attendant has a tip jar set up. So if there are tip jars set out on the bar, in the restrooms, or at the coat check, then I do not think you need to double up on that. But again, this is definitely up to your personal discretion. A third guideline for tipping your vendors, if there is someone who you definitely know you want to leave a tip for, as you are settling up your final payments in the days before the wedding, consider including the tip right then and there. Make it clear as you are filling out and signing that final bill that you are adding on an additional amount. Tipping in advance can be an incentive for good service, and it also gets it out of the way, so to speak, so that you're not having to leave 12 envelopes full of cash with your best man or your dad or whoever to stand and hand out to vendors on the night of the wedding. So just write it in on that final bill. It's over. It's done with, and you don't need to worry about it. Tipping guideline number four is that sending a tip in the week's after the wedding, along with a thank you note, is also totally acceptable. So rather than having your best man or anyone else who you appoint to just stand and indiscriminately hand out tip envelopes to every single person who walks out the door, what if there was nothing exceptional about that service? Or worse, what if the service was actually underwhelming versus what you were promised or what you were expecting. So for example, what if the bouquets and centerpieces showed up looking smaller than they had at the final trial at the mock-up? What if there are flowers missing from what you had agreed to? Another example from my own very personal experience, our wedding officiant left out an entire element of the ceremony script. And we kind of noticed it at the time, and we ended up doing that portion of our ceremony during our dinner instead. So it was not a huge deal, but we didn't send him off with a tip. I was overall very happy with the way he performed what we had hired him to do, and I definitely wouldn't write a bad review over it or anything because I totally understand that mistakes happen, but there was nothing about that experience that warranted a monetary thank you on top of what we had already paid him. So this type of situation is why I think the idea of tipping after the wedding is a really good thing to consider. After the dust has settled, after you and your now husband or wife have had a chance to talk things over, um, you noticed this, we noticed that the officiant left out that entire part of our ceremony. 
you are not personally going to want to be walking around on your wedding day judging whether or not everyone you hired is doing their job or doing a good job. That is not something that I want you to be consumed with on your wedding day. So in closing for this point, consider doing a tip after the fact, after the dust has settled, after the two of you have had a discussion about who did what and what did we love and what could have maybe been better. And then you can kind of go after the fact and decide who truly went above and beyond what was expected and send a tip and a thank you note after the fact. That's totally acceptable. And last but certainly not least, I have one final little guideline for you about tipping your wedding vendors. People like photographers, officiants, DJs, wedding coordinators, and wedding florists are oftentimes individuals who run their own small business. And when you really get down to it, a tip is a thank you for awesome service, right? I will tell you as a business owner myself that a heartfelt thank you in the form of a written review or maybe a video testimonial from a very happy client is worth more than money in some cases. Something to consider is offering to write your vendors a detailed review that they can then publish on their website or share online on social media, use in other sales materials. Videos are also an awesome way for that vendor to share your experience with other potential clients. If someone takes the time to do a really nice video testimonial that is high enough quality to share and post on social media and share out there in the world with other potential clients, that is priceless. Sharing how thrilled you were with the way Amy, the wedding coordinator, handled the special details of your wedding day and you couldn't have done it without her and you would recommend her to anyone, that is really, really valuable. So if you do not or cannot or do not want to send a monetary tip, this form of saying thank you in a really, really meaningful review is very, very valuable and will be much appreciated by your vendors. So here we are to come full circle back around to what I said at the beginning of today's show. There's a myth that you have to tip all of your wedding vendors, and this is simply not true. For better or worse, there is not a consistent across the board set of rules on tipping your vendors. So everywhere you look, everyone you talk with is going to have a different set of guidelines for who should get a tip and how much it should be. And this is why it's so confusing. The truth is that you have the right to carefully consider who's going to receive an extra thank you for their contribution to your wedding, and you should never feel obligated or bullied into leaving a gratuity for a vendor who merely showed up and did their job. I really wish there was a wedding vendor tipping Bible that I could point you to and it had a clear cut, straightforward list of exactly how much to leave for every single vendor. But alas, there is not a wedding vendor tipping Bible and every single unique situation, every level of service, the price paid, and all of the surrounding circumstances would just simply make a standardized list impossible to create. The good news is that you do not have to prepack dozens of envelopes with hundreds of dollars in each and then simply have your best man handing one out to every single person as they walk out the door. If there are vendors who have done a particularly good job, then by all means, say thank you to them for that service based on what feels comfortable to you. This can happen before the wedding as you're filling out your final bills. This can happen the day of the wedding in the form of handing out cash. And it can also happen as a follow-up in the weeks after the wedding. Thank you so much for joining me this week on the Wedding Planning Podcast. I've been sharing my signature wedding planning advice on the podcast for eight years now, and for the first time ever, I've opened up my door to one-on-one wedding strategy calls. Whether you're looking for just one session to get your wedding plan started, or a series of ongoing support throughout your engagement, I'm here for you. Get the details and book your first call today when you visit wedpodcast.com. We'll talk soon.